In this video, I want to show you how you can deal with different currencies um, and converting different currencies in your Power BI reports. I'm going to show you how you can handle a very simple exchange rate table and also how to handle exchange rates that changes over time. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's go through this example that I've already prepared for you today. Uh, it's a simple currencies reports and if we go to the data view here all we have here is just some sample sales data. Uh, again, different uh, groceries, so different orders, when they were purchased, what was purchased, uh, the quantity and unit price for each product, each order, and also what currency they were bought in. So it could be US dollars, British pounds, Japanese yen, the, these kind of currencies. And along with this, we also have a currency exchange rate table that just converts all of the different currencies into euros. So we'll work with the assumption that you want to convert uh, all your different sales into a singular, um, singular currency, which is euro. We have our two tables here that we always prepare as usual we have a calendar table which we use for our time intelligence and also we have a measures table which we house the all the measures that we want to use for our report which in this case is just the total sales at the moment multiplying the quantity and unit price then the issue with that is if you want to use that now to get the total sales for your sales table it doesn't really make sense um, and that's because the total sales um, adds up all of the values regardless of its currency so it adds up uh, Japanese yen, US dollars, British pounds values all together without accounting for the fact that they are different currencies so if we want to show the actual current sales uh, total sales I mean we need to convert them into euros first uh, into the same currency before we can uh, do these total sales calculation so let's go through it together and before we create the measure just to show you the the model here is quite simple we have the calendar table connecting to the purchase date here and then we have the currency connected by the currency in the sales table I just wait to understand the data model that we have so now let's create this new measure. So let's hit new measure here and let's name this um, total sales in euro. So first we'll create a variable which will hold the currency that we want to use as a filter context. And I'll show you why we need to do this in a second. So we'll create a variable here. We'll name this currency and we'll put this in a max. We want the currency of the sales table. Next, we'll create another variable. We'll name this conversion rate. This will hold the conversion rate that we will use for our calculation. Now to get the conversion rate for every single uh, order, we want to create a calculate um, function here. And here in the conversion rate, we want the actual value, right? So in this case, we want to get the uh, euro from the currency uh, and we're putting it within max because uh, measures don't handle um, raw context so we need to put them in a, a filter context uh, by aggregating it so now on the filter context now we want to compare the currency is the same as the currency variable that we've created. So what that's doing is that it's comparing the currency from the currency table and the currency that you fetched on this variable. And you can't just use the max within the filter context of the calculate because it will fail. So that's why we have to put it in a variable first. And it might sound a little bit confusing, but let me show you how this looks like in the end. So let's return this conversion rate into this measure and let's drag this into our table here. So you'll see now that it's giving us the conversion rate for each of those. Uh, so you see, for example, for US dollars, converting US dollars to euros is 1.22. 
And if we look at the currency table here, yep, it's 1.22. So it's exactly what we needed, which is fine. That's exactly what we wanted. So now that we have the conversion rates, uh, we want to multiply this conversion rate with the unit price to convert the unit price into euros. And then we can multiply it with the quantity to understand and get the total sales for that order. So to make it a little bit simpler to read, I'm gonna create another variable here and we'll see say unit price in euro and this will con multiply the conversion rates multiplied by the uh, unit price here and then now the unit price is what we will use uh, multiplied by the quantity So now you've converted all of these unit prices into euros and then got the total sales by multiplying the quantity to euros into this measure. And if you want to use it as total sales, you can now use that. We can replace the total sales here, replace it with euros, uh, drag it here maybe. And we want to, we can now change this one to have a currency symbol because we know it's euro. And there you have it. So that seems pretty straightforward, right? Regardless of the length of the measure itself, um, the actual process itself is pretty simple. But now let's imagine you have currencies in different years, so, and you want to get the total sales for those different years, um, depending on when the purchase date is. So for example, you have a US dollar purchase in 2020, but you don't wanna just get the US dollar currency conversion into euros but you want to also make sure that it's the conversion for the right date and to do that let's have a look at here so i've created a different query here so instead of the currency where we just have the different currencies and their conversion rates we have here an annual currency uh, which has all the different currencies that we use except for the different years it's annual currency so it's giving us a different conversion rate per year so how do we utilize this in our reports so here we want to convert these unit prices into the right conversion rates in the annual currency table that we have so in order for us to get the right conversion rate from the annual currency table we need to find the linking factors between these two tables and the two linking factors needs to be the currency um, and the purchase dates or the, the date of the annual currency and the format in the annual currency is a year so you see we have the year here so we want to have this same column here as well um, which we don't have so we don't have a year here and to do that it's pretty simple we'll right click on one of the columns here we will do add columns from examples and we'll start inputting the what we want to extract from these columns so uh, let's say 2020 and you'll see that it uses a bit of AI to recognize what you want to extract from your uh, rows and it's recognized that I want the year. So um, hit OK and now you have the years on a different column here in your sales table. From here all you need to do is hit merge queries so we want to kind of combine these uh, two tables together and on the right hand side we want to select the annual currency and pay attention to what I'm doing here. So I will select the two linking factors, but what I'll do when I click year, and then when I select the currency, I'll hold control and then click. So you see it will show you a number there. So it means that it will use these two columns as a way to link to your second table. And we need to follow the same format. So again, in the annual currency table, select year. And then when you select the currency, select uh, control and then select and we'll hit OK here and then we'll expand and just get me the euro values and there you go so now you have the euro values uh, exchange rates that you want to use for your reports and just to check that this is correct let's have a look at some values here so you see here this uh, line 15 we have the us dollar value the exchange rate is 1.5 for us dollars so that's for 2021 but for 2020 usd is 1.3 
and if we look at the annual currency here for US dollar 2021 is 1.5 2020 is 1.3 so exactly what we wanted so from here all you need to do is just create a new column that will get the total sales so here we're going to create a custom column we'll add unit price multiplied by the euro and then this value we want to multiply with the quantity hit ok and there you go so now you have the total sales that you can use um, for your reports and that's really it for this video i hope it helped you understand how easy it is to deal with converting currencies in power bi leave a like on this video if it helped you it's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content get in touch using the social media links that i included in the description box below and thank you so much for watching guys see you again on the next one